Thank you. We usually have to share a mic, so this is great because I don't <laughs> want to share. This is great. So. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday morning. So we're going to get into it because we have slides to say who we are. So we'll go. I, I did that. So we're from digital. We are a mobile app um, in development firm. We are based in DC, Washington, uh, Washington DC, New York, and LA. We believe in the trifecta philosophy, and that is we build for mobile web and IoT, and we like to see projects that do all three of those in one. So we believe in full, fully collect, connected um, development projects. I am Rakia. I'm the CEO of Fin Digital. Um, I um, oh, what happened? Did I do that? Go back to me. I'm somebody special. Um, we don't believe in, we, we like to use emoticons as much as possible, so uh, we think it's a better visual force because we believe in really good user experience design. So here's some fun things about me, guys. Um, I, I first went to school for sociology, and then that then turned in me going for my MBA. During that time in school, I found out that I really, really loved technology, became a developer while I was getting my MBA. And um, with that, I met this guy. We decided to start a firm um, and build really extensive at the time. We were building um, very, my Marcus is, is in mobile and I was in um, database development. So we came together and through that we have started a number of startups. Um, and have had our app development firm, and we've opened a lot of doors for building applications for everybody, with everybody in mind. Um, at the time that I was in this space, people that looked like me, whether it was um, race and or sex, weren't really there. So um, it allowed us the opportunity to kind of design with um, our, our subgroups in mind. I'm an avid bike rider. Um, I am happily married with a child, um, and I love building mobile apps with this guy over here. So I'm Marcus Finley. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm from the, the sunny state of Florida, uh, born and raised. Uh, but I've always had a love of technology and mobile, and that's really driven uh, my career and my, my path. Uh, but you know now at the beginning and the foundation of Fin Digital, we've been working with uh, companies all shapes and sizes and developing uh, applications and really helping them uh, identify the, their user experience and really honing in to get their ideas into the world. And so that's been really exciting. Love football, all things sports. Uh, have a son that I'm freaking nuts about. And then uh, I, you know I love user experience and I teach at General Assembly uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, so on to the onto the festivities. So there's two things that if we walk away with anything, I want you guys to walk away with. Um, and that is truly understanding what unconscious bias is. And I'm, I'm sure that you guys kind of feel like you know the definition, but really talking about how that definition affects you and affects people that are experiencing it, whether or not they're experiencing it because of you. Um, and how to really take responsibility in unconscious bias and how you play a role in that. I know majority of this room are devs, and it's very easy for us to say, you know, this isn't our problem. This isn't our fault. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the other guy's fault when they're doing the idea making. So we're really going to talk about how you put yourself at the table to prevent unconscious bias from happening in technology. Sorry, I got, I got, who, who has the new iPhone 7? Who secretly hates the new iPhone 7? All right. They're conducting a test, in case nobody knew. Um, so first, let's go into the easy part. What is unconscious bias? Everybody has it. 
Unconscious bias is actually a knee-jerk reaction. It's actually our defense mechanism that we have in society. It allows us to group things together and to allow us to make quick decisions. It means that I, as a person, don't have to assess and take time to assess and spend that time. I can make very quick knee-jerk decisions. In the way of development, that helps us. Right? We all know the basic standard code when you're starting to build. Right? We already know what we're supposed to write. We already know if we're doing um, a data import, uh, or not data import, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong talk. We already know if we're doing um, a registration form on an app that we're building. We already know what it's supposed to look like, what fields we're supposed to do, first name, last name, email. We know that, right? That's that knee-jerk reaction. It allows us to work a little bit faster. We all have that. It's good that we have it. But what the downfall to, the, to that as individuals is, we do that same knee-jerk and that same data um, organizing to people. And we do that, when we do that to people, it means this particular person might act this way towards me, so I need to act this way, right? And when we're designing, we say, a person with an iPhone 7 is a really smart individual. They might, you know, they love technology, they love doing things, so I know if I put the menu at the top and I barely say that it's there, they're gonna know, right? But then we say, well, the person with an iPhone 4 is never gonna download my app, so I really don't care. But what you accidentally did is you did economic bias. So it's something that we do, we don't really realize we're doing it, but it's okay. So this is the safe space where I tell you, it's okay, everybody in here has that problem. Right, we all have that issue. So now we're gonna talk about how to use it. So we're gonna do a little exercise. So I'm gonna ask a question. Who here, when you woke up this morning, you immediately checked your emails? Awesome. Okay, when you checked your emails, who replied to the very first email that they saw? Nobody? You? Come up here, you're, the, you're a participant. <laughs> So you can take Marcus's mic. Thank you for your honesty. Maybe too honest. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you to look at the screen. This is a regular phone. That's an iPhone, I have an Android. I'm just kidding, I'm sorry. Oh, high unconscious bias, that was easy. That was too easy. I didn't wanna talk about my email. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a regular phone. Um, yep. I want you to, everybody in this room, I want you to figure out who this phone belongs to. I want you to picture that person. That person is sitting right next to you. What are they wearing? Did you talk to them? What did they eat? Like, I want you to see that person, All right? I want, to, I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. What's the gender of this person? Are they important at their job? What's the race of this person? How knowledgeable is this person about technology? Are they an admin or are they a dev? Or are they in DevOps? You can extend that. What do they do? Are they a coder, front end? What do they do? Would you hang out with them? Really simple questions. Tell me about this person. Answer those questions for me. They're really hard questions, too. Um, so, I'm not capable of determining gender from looking at a screen. Okay. So I think it could be either with what anyone identifies with. So I'm gonna punt on that one. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm being serious, like I'm just being open and honest. Um, are they important at their job? Um, could be. I think, I think I should based upon- somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can't, you know, can't determine race from a phone, in my mind, but, I mean, there's lots of apps that I use there, right? So I'm gonna play along a little bit. Um, so maybe they are like me. How knowledgeable are they about the technology? Well, they've got Starbucks on there, so they're very knowledgeable. <laughs> um, coffee, yes. Um, for tea drinkers, I apologize. Um, Pinterest, maybe, I don't know what that says. Nothing against Pinterest. Um, are they an admin or a dev? Uh, I think they're an iPhone user, but I won't hold that against them. 
yeah, see, well, I'm playing a little different into it, but anyhow. Um, and yes, I'd hang out with them. I hang out with all sorts of individuals. So I, yeah, I might have just ruined this for you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, you have you have a lot of implicit bias going on. Yes. Help me, just sure. map this person out for me, if you had to. Just force yourself yeah. to kind of knee jerk reaction. Who is this person? Describe them for me. Organized person who likes coffee. Uh, potentially drives a lot because they have ways on there, so they could be in their car quite a bit. Um, enjoys looking through lots of different photos and ideas on Pinterest. So probably creative and really needs to return phone calls. <laughs> 232. Is that your phone? I'm just curious. <laughs> who, who disagrees with what we've heard? OK, go for it. Um, from behind? Oh, if you're gonna if you're gonna like stereotype all to heck, Pinterest almost always people assume that it is going to be a female gender. The Bible application definitely isolates you down to potentially an older population. That's the assumption. Um, they don't have any mod like extremely detailed filters for their email. They look at phone calls, but they don't clear out ones that have been, you know, they've seen or acknowledged. So they're not particularly technically obsessed. Uh, I can't quite tell what the uh, the P, the green P icon is. Oh, that's uh, tadpoles. Tadpoles. No clue. Oh, the oh, okay. oh, okay. I mean, if, if, if I were Parkle. to, like, completely make an inappropriately biased guess, I guess maybe an older, potentially a, a non-white woman that, you know, drives suburbia. Wild guessing. Um, also probably pretty active. Look at my fitness pal. Mm -hmm. And it might be important for really important people to have the coffee brought to them, they don't get started. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'd say they're important. Like a technical yeah. background. Yeah. That's really tiny. Good eyes, Liz. Oh, oh, Alright, does anybody else have anything that they felt haven't been said? Yeah. You guys are good. <laughs> so you, a lot of you were correct. The person is me. I heard a lot of people whispering, it's her, it's her. <laughs> the person is me. Um, someone asked about tadpoles. This is my, I, my kid goes to daycare. This is the app they use to actually take pictures and I can spy on my kid while he's in daycare. So that's, that always um, tricks people up. Um, it's a very bad app. They need a redesign really bad. Um, so yes, now we all realize everything we said here was unconscious bias. We are very aware of that, right? Um, so I, I just wanted to activate your unconscious bias. I decided to martyr myself to do that. Um, does anybody have questions about my life? Why they're all up in my phone? No? Why don't I read my emails? I get a lot of them. I, am, I, am, um, I manage our devs. So there's a lot of emails about what my devs are supposed to be doing. So I, I, um, I force press. 
I, I see them and then I slack them and tell them what they need to be doing. So I don't open. I preview. And I need to stop doing that. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, my mom calls me a lot. <laughs> and it's just, it's just really bad. <laughs> I'm working on that. I'm working on that one. That's a personal issue. Um, <laughs> so, yes. Um, awesome. But what's really important is that we use frames of reference to be able to, you know, the Pinterest app, you know, a lot of women use Pinterest or heavily use Pinterest. And so those types of references allows us to be able to make assumptions of, you know, a person's personality or who they are. And so based upon that, we're able to, I hate to say put them in a box, but allows us to at least quickly put some perspective on the interaction we're about to have. And so that's really how unconscious bias works. And we'll talk a little about implicit. And then what I want you to do is switch this from the development side and switches from the branding side. A lot of these apps are built to give us a certain perspective. Pinterest, right? Girl, we know it's girl, right? Even a lot of, when we do this, this talk a lot, a lot of people don't know what tadpoles is, but they reference it to a woman, just because of big eyes and it looks fine and it looks curly, or they'll say, oh, it's a really girly game, right? So we, even in our profession, tend to judge applications and then judge the people, or we judge the devices and we judge the people. So, all right, so now we've activated our unconscious bias. Our realization is we think we know what tech looks like. We think we know what a dev looks like. We think we know how they function, how they talk. And when we go into a new job or a new opportunity or a new, or a new team that we're about to build, we have a perception of what our team's gonna look like and how we need to function. Even when we get dressed as a technology person, we tend to dress what we feel like is expected of us, right? We put on our tech outfit. Whenever I go to a conference, I try to dress up as much as possible because it throws people off. I'm like, well, what are you here for? Are you a sponsor? Are you supposed to be here? Right? Because there's a perception that we have around technology. Right? But what we, what we see on a regular basis, but we can't seem to change our unconscious bias about, is that tech doesn't really look like that anymore. Tech actually looks like all people. Now, it's not always as diverse as this, but we need to take responsibility of our unconscious bias and speak up and say, you know what, I want my team to look like this. Because I want to believe that we're going to build for these people. So we have to represent, our team as developers have to represent the people that we're actually building for. So, how do we do that? there's this term called implicit bias. I like to liken it to the AA meeting of biased. Because having implicit bias truly means that you identify your unconscious bias, you acknowledge your unconscious bias, and you activate it so you can be more conscious. So I, Rakia, know that I have no true understanding of the complete opposite of myself. So a white male, um, in uh, middle, middle class America. I don't really know his day to day. I don't really know how he functions. I don't know what device he uses. I don't even know how he utilizes technology. So I'm gonna acknowledge that and realize that I have biases around that person. I have preconceived notions about that group. I'm gonna activate it, I'm gonna be implicit. I'm left-handed. When I tend to design, all my stuff is on the left side, I promise you. You will know if I built an app because the menu's on the left, the button's on the left, everything's on the left because I use my phone on my left and it's always really hard to like hit stuff. So I acknowledge that when I design, I design for myself. I have a preconceived notion, unconscious bias, that people that are right-handed, all their apps are for them anyway, they're fine, they'll get by. So <laughs> and I don't care. When right-handers, which predominantly um, devs and UXs are, um, build, you know, they have the prominent menu is on the top right, logos on the left, menu is somewhere that my finger can't get to. Um, so they have a unconscious bias of left-handers don't have a problem with this, they're fine. So you have to acknowledge it and be conscious. So as a right-hander, when you're designing or developing, we say, okay, well, where is everything placed? Can everybody in one hand actually work with this layout that we have here. 
right? So that's being implicit. It's just putting your conscious to action. So, sorry. So, what are some things you can do to be implicit? These are kind of my, my five staples of when you're beginning a dev project. And who here, who here is mobile? Who's here? Who's mobile? Who's building mobile? OK, one mobile. Who's web, back end, just deep web interface, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, mostly. OK, what didn't I say? Who's like ops? Who's just ops manager? Yeah. OK, OK, lots of ops manager people. OK. We don't care about you guys. So <laughs> what, <laughs> what do you do? Because usually, and, and, and not to shout you guys out, but the managers and the head of ops are the people that you actually have to activate these five things to. So the first thing is flip the narrative. When you go into your first project and you have your user case, right? You know what you're building for. You have an idea of who you're building for. And you know what it's supposed to do. You do that, and you go in, and you guys are talking about this like arbitrary person Right, that's going to be using this thing that you're building. And you, you see them when you talk about them. It's either the CEO or the manager that brought the project on. You know, it's usually your manager who came and brought the project to you. And it's like, here's what we're going to do for this said client who doesn't have a face. Um, so you have this, but you have this concept in your head of who you're building for. You got to flip that. And what I always do is I picture that person, because we always find a person, and I, I change their demographic. So if I immediately picture, the, the white guy in the jeans and the black blazer with the t-shirt, right, I flip it. I'm like, okay, we're gonna do black woman, dresses, left-handed, you know, and, and opens this app every single day. So we flip the narrative and I start talking about the app like I'm building it for her. So activate yourself to flip the narrative. And of course, we're gonna activate our unconscious bias where we're gonna question ourselves. Am I aware of who I'm building for? Do I know about them? Have I experienced them before? Do I know how they utilize technology? So you want to question yourself. And more often than not, you're going to say no. So then what do you do when you say no? You acknowledge. And if you look around, if any time you're sitting, who here has done a project where they're sitting at their table with their team and every single person is a white male? Hi. How are you guys? Right? So that's when you go to your manager and you very find the best way to say, we are lacking diversity in our team. And that doesn't mean that we're bad at our job. It doesn't mean that we're not going to do this correctly. It just means that we don't have the unbiased skills to build for everybody. So we need to fix that. And then your manager is going to be like, well, what do you want me to do about it? Or do you want me to fire you and hire someone else? And you're like, no, it's not what I want you to do. I just want us to have a very honest conversation about who we're building for. And sometimes that means you have five user case scenarios, and you don't like all of them that you're working with. Uh, Mark is going to talk about it a little bit more, but one of the examples we always have is um, your, um, your first name add-in. We have a valid, let's say we have a first name field, got to put in your first name. It's a validator to make sure that it's not an error. What do, you, what do you do to validate that the first name isn't an error? What are some of the validation rules that you create? Someone throw one out. Starts with a capital. That's good. Hmm? It's not a number, right? There we go. It's a single word. Always happens. Someone always says it. I love it. Right? But I met, and I know, single-handedly, a very, very smart and amazing woman named Jimmy. Her name is spelled J-I space M-I. Majority of times, including with her bank, including with her, her, um, her employee portal, Jimmy cannot put in her name. All it required was a user case scenario with someone who didn't have a regular American name. And that would have been fixed before you even began to develop code. So it's, it's really acknowledging the diversity in the room and activating that and saying, we don't know anything about this, so if we're not going to hire someone to speak for these particular people, we need to have more user case scenarios where I know, as a developer, I'm functioning correctly. And then your manager will like flurry and be like, how many more hours is that going to be? Oh my god, what about budget? <laughs> and then you say, we can handle it. We can do this. All right. And then when you do that, you hold yourself you hold your manager, and you hold your team accountable. 
So at all times, when you're talking about what you're building, you say, well, did we factor in Jimmy? Did we factor in left-handers? Did we factor in um, how we do the sex field? Are we doing salutations? Are we factoring all concepts of that? So you hold yourself accountable at every phase of development. And then, my favorite, you find the power of empathy. I know you guys talked a lot about empathy yesterday. It seemed like it was a really awesome talk. I'm really excited about that. All right? And finding empathy is giving you the fortitude to continue to have this conversation. When you're up way too early, you've coded this thing way too much, you've talked to your manager way too much, and you've already entered your hours and you're not going to do it again, you kind of get to this point of like, it's fine. It's fine. looks real good. It works. It's great. But you have to have the empathy and the, to generate the fortitude to keep pushing forward and say, does this really apply to everybody? So these are the five things that I want you guys to truly remember to, to activate your implicit bias. So we want to talk a little bit about the experience side. And I know we, there's a lot of devs in here, but now as we're thinking about experience, everyone plays a part in that. You, you know, from the development side and how we're talking about validation and in those parts, but on, you know, so there's so many aspects of experience now that we all, depending on your role on team, play a part in how that, you know, how we present an experience to the end user. And Rakia mentioned this particular uh, uh, example, but you know, as you're thinking about in, in the experience, the really places where the you know unconscious bias may present its head is usually when you're looking for input back from the user. So there may have been a moment where, like Rakia said, a use case was not factored in, or we didn't broaden our use cases to factor in all the kind of groupings of users that could possibly be there. And so something could be missed, like the first name and a two-part first name. So being very knowledgeable about expanding your use cases, making sure that you're thinking about all the scenarios of the people who could be you know, being part of the, or interacting with the application in some way. Uh, so there's a couple ways where Key has highlighted a few as we're thinking about the user experience side. Uh, there's a number of activities. If we have more time, we'll go into deeper in what these activities are. But if you do a little research, you can find resources on implicit bias exercises for teams to really kind of get your team thinking and really start thinking outside of their unconscious and be able to activate implicit bias more intentionally through all the exercises and, and all activities in development. Uh, empathy exercises are pretty um, well known, but thinking more of besides just a user, but thinking about empathy CI exercises relevant to cultural differences would be really important as you're thinking about expanding uh, the reach of your application. And then user interviews are going to be really critical. Like you said, some, some development teams just aren't diverse enough. And so being able to actually talk to users and making sure there's a, a rich enough pot of diversity within that user group to make sure that, you know, if we don't have a full understanding of cultural differences or whatever they may be, we can be able to have user interviews that will actually unearth things that we may not have thought about before. Uh, just a quick example, uh, we're developing a kind of natural language bot around history, uh, but really, it was really a good exercise for us to be able to act actually activate our own implicit um, bias uh, as we're developing the application. So thinking about, you know, from, from children to adults to, uh, white, black, Hispanic, Latino, all the whole the whole gambit to think about how people are going to have a conversation with a bot and how that conversation could be different. Could it be in different language? Could it be English and Spanish? Uh, and thinking about how that could affect how the bot's going to respond based upon his inputs. So having a diverse set of use cases was really helpful for us to make sure that we were going to hit on the head all these different groups and how that we can make sure that it's going to be a, a useful experience depending on no matter what your background was. And so that's really how you think of, you really want to make sure that, you know, you really nail in so you know, if we're going to have a really diverse group of users, how do we develop use cases and make sure that we're going to make sure we have a great experience for them. And just an example of, or just to give you a synopsis of this particular app, it's called Hello History. It's an educational app where um, teenagers could have an organic text message with someone from history um, to kind of get them to the point of learning about that history. So it's a really fun um, AI that we did. But what we also had to do is we had to write a natural language for the 
um, historic figures that we were writing for. And we realized, as African Americans, that we got into the, the historic figures that were African American, we had an unconscious bias about how they would talk. And we had to kind of activate that for ourselves, being like, okay, well, we don't know if MLK would say, like, what's up? Like, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know that, guys. Calm down. <laughs> so it, it's really, even from our perspective, um, you have to really acknowledge when you have that unconscious bias, whether it's positive or negative, and really activate it. So talk a little bit about how you factor this in through the, the actual development process. So uh, we're all familiar with the discovery process. At DES, you're probably still limited, but you're still usually pulled into the discovery process. They want to make sure the architecture is right, things like that. But making sure that now that we're all part of the process, we need to also make sure that we're all forcing our teams to be implicit. Uh, so that's making sure that you're pushing, hey, making sure everyone's clear, like, who are we targeting? Are there cultural differences? Do we have a full understanding of what those differences are? Uh, and then do, have we talked to them? And so really kind of pushing your team uh, and being, the, if you need to be that spokesperson, you're that, and really making sure these points are pushed to make sure that you're, you're making sure you're creating an inclusive experience. Uh, and then the development process, like we said, there's probably development validation rules that may need to be changed. Uh, if certain groups or use cases weren't addressed, um, really pushing to validate assumptions through prototyping, uh, user testing is gonna be key. And then uh, really making sure if there are personas that you can create that then can be shared across the team that could be also consistent references of the groups that you're trying to target. Uh, and again, prototyping is going to be huge, um, especially as we think user testing will be the, the best way to make sure that you're, you're creating an inclusive experience. Uh, the faster you can get to the prototyping phase and to be able to get the idea out in people's hands, uh, it'll help you validate as well as help you to start validating some of your own assumptions of how people will react to the experiences. So, of course, paper prototyping is great uh, and balsamic. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with that, but it's a really great prototyping tool that allows you to be able to quickly be able to get this experience out and be able to get validated ideas really quickly. So, I think that covers what we want to talk about today. So, are there any kind of questions and answers? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks again to the finalists, um, and we will be sticking around for the open spaces, so please stay out.